Hey guys, and how's it going? This is gonna be part three. I think it probably should be the last one of the series of this John Deere 160 that was on the side of the road with a free sign on it. You need a bunch of love. The last two videos I've taken care of, the engine issues, electrical system, brakes, tires, uh, belts, gas tank, fuel line, switches that were missing, that kind of stuff. We are to the point now we can probably actually just run around and uh, have it be self-propelled, but let's finish it up. Let's get the rear tin back on, the seat back on, that kind of stuff. Knobs, shifters, and uh, probably the mower deck would be the next one. We got to give it some love. It seems like it needs to be addressed and possibly get that back on there. Without further ado, let's give her. Let's wrestle. To, I think it came in at a funky angle around that shifter. out a lot went back in a lot easier than it came off all the plastics are uh, removed last time i was trying to get it off with the little plates on it let's get some bolts on that that looked good it's a little greener than the rest of it though huh and i gotta paint the whole thing actually on the camera it looks greener in real life it's not yeah i'm jumping the gun i gotta get the seat on it because i'm not gonna have access i don't think very well to the for the hardware that needs to go underneath let's get i'll put a piece of like a two by four underneath it we'll lift it up and then get the seat on it yeah i knew i was gonna have more of a struggle than that knew something was missing let's see we got two rounds in the front and two squares in the back these have to stop on them hmm. i don't know if that stop went forward or back I'm tall, so we're going to leave it so that it slides all the way back, I guess. And we need to come through the bottom. I don't know how much of a... Without scratching the paint up too much. One of you guys would be so kind to hold that for me. <laughs> yeah. Wedge some pressure on it, hold it in place. There we go. Yeah, the seat's kind of ratty. I'll, I'll keep an eye out for a new one. For now, it's getting up there to run. I do have a couple of seats in my stash at home, but it's in the wrong spot. But the uh, color might not be right. It might not be a John Deere one. I, I thought I had a, they call these low backs. I'll show you on the later on on the other John Deere. So I'm going to do this to the other two. Then I think we can drop it down. Is that I'll probably move the seat all the way back. Does that look right? That's about as far back as it's gonna go, even with that front. Kind 
Let's try that again. And you got two bolts to drop in. One. Got to reroute our, our power wire here. I think we're good. I say before we put the uh, tins on, let's go rattle can black some of this stuff out here and give her a little bit of a aesthetic improvements. All right, I always wanted to try this. Let's see if it'll work. <laughs> I guess I should make sure that's all the way in on the stroke or else the can's gonna punch into the, the backstop. Think it's gonna break the blade? Let's go find out. It's looking at accident waiting to happen, doesn't it? <laughs> See how that worked. You have a piece of green tape here, I guess from the factory. Now it's now it's green black. Let's see if we can get that. And we're just trying to clean it up, make it a little a little bit more presentable. Nothing to go crazy about, but I'm not much on restorations. I'm more of a, a restoration kind of guy. This is paint and primary one, and it is rust-oleum. Rust-oleum is okay. You can paint rust. Rust-oleum can paint over rust, hence the name rust-oleum. Yeah, I always want to try that paint shaker setup. I'll hit the red wire. All right, you get the idea. A little dent in the grill. Let's see if we can maybe slide hammer that out of there. We can get in there. bend to it so you can get rid of that bend. Yeah, it looks a little, a little bit. I'm gonna go beat on that with a hammer. Looks like a mouse is trying to break out of jail. Let's see if we can get, I gotta, I gotta pull, try to influence that side too. That I don't pull the one next to it over it, you know? Good, leave it alone. Let me take the hammer on just a little bit. See if I can get it pulled back out a little bit more. Can we get this off of here? Backside, get a little ch -ch -ch -ch. Suck it in. need is a hammer.
A little love for the grill. Give you a little bit of a wrong bottle. <laughs> I almost washed it. That's better. A little. Most of it together, except for we're, we're missing. Get him. We're missing that knob right there. One of the two of them we're missing. I put it on this side for now. Let's go shopping. See if we can find one. Let's see what we got in the stash. These are all tractors that. Went past their prime and gave up what they had left. I guess we'll call them tractor organ donors. Get in there. That one look for something with a small thread on it. What about? And that one right there. Friend may or may not be it. Put a her shifter on it. <laughs> I'll put that on there. Yeah, I think the threads are going to be too big. Actually, this one's got them ripped out. Hold on. It's two of the same in there, but of course, it wants to go all the way to the bottom. That one's got more in it. That one's they're, they're kind of like ground away. Not that it matters. I can try shoving some wire in there. What else can we fill in there? Shove a tie wrapper or something alongside it and crank it down. This one's more of the same color as the other one. Kind of that flat black. Let's go and see if we can. I know you want two or three of those. When I go home to the stash of tractors, I'll eyeball what we got going on over there. Maybe uh, the crack ones on one of those. Can I get to the bottom of that? Should probably spread those out a little, huh? I should have maybe left it long and then cut them off after if we can get in there. Try that. Let's see if we can get. Where are we? I think it'll tighten up. It'll work. Yep, 
Good enough for now, I guess. Next piece to put on, hopefully went on in this order, is that. So let's get some wires out of our way. And I think the other side of the site is going to fight us a little. I don't think they had any screws. I gotta go find, hunt down some screws for that upper location right there. I'll bolt that up. And after a little hunting, we got two that are kind of close to each other. I put its deer back. Get in there. One of the, one of the tabs was broke off. to do. Well, other than the dirty hood and the dirty seat, it's looking much better. One thing I noticed though is uh, valve stems on the outside. I had this wheel off, but the valve stem was on the inside when I did it. And that's the way I put it back on. But I'm looking at the distance between the front suspension. There's about a quarter of an inch on that one. And a little further on that. So I might have a slight offset. I'm going to flip that tire around so that they're both facing the same way. And where was that little, little clip around? So how many of you noticed it? You did not. A couple of you were saying you did. You didn't notice it. Now I gotta go clean the rim on this side. It'll definitely make it easier for getting oil in it though. Oil, air. And it's been holding there. It had a very slight, after we sealed that on the last one, a couple little bubbles were coming out of the sidewall. We'll just keep an eye on it. I'm gonna go clean that up. Well, that's looking fairly decent. Let's go focus on that pile. See so if we can get that fixed up. Here we, see. we got a rot hole down in there to deal with. The metal seems like it's fairly good around. It actually looks like it, it either threw a blade or something got hit and, and it blew through the deck because it's not like it's rusty around the edge and real thin. It looks like it just something went into it and cut it. That pulley's good. That one's kind of questionable. Throw some grease in it and spin it. That one feels pretty good. And that one, well, that one is that one. <laughs> Let's go deal with that. Let's go get the uh, impact gun. I just got a nut underneath it or not. We'll run that bolt out of there, see what we got. <laughs> Noise alert. I blame it on the paint. <laughs> Shit's out, come on. Hmm. We could try prying up underneath it and driving down the center. Yeah, it's gonna be this bearing is gonna be gone. Water probably went in right around the seal and took it out. I took the washer off, I put the bolt back in. Actually, am I gonna have enough? I gotta figure out what's the, what's the inner race yet. I think that bolt might be standing over the, over the top of it a little. Yeah. 
Yeah, let me see if I get. I gotta be inside that lip because this is where the brake is right here. I'm gonna find a bolt that doesn't have a shoulder on it. I thought just taking a washer off would have made it, but it's not gonna do it. Let's go see. That ought to work. Let's get rid of that. Sometimes when you're expecting something to be really screwed. Better not speak too soon, huh? Top one turns, the bottom ones. The one's totally locked up, rightfully so. Hmm. We do have the mower deck off the John Deere 318. That was like all rotted out. Let's go see possibly if they're gonna be the same diameter. Here's the mower deck off the 318. Hmm, it does not use the same setup. If a spindle does that look like the same size as that? Yeah, the caliper that looks a little larger, doesn't it? Would that have no? It has one belt coming from the tractor going around, and then that other belt just goes by itself. I don't know if there was something there or not. Yeah, back by the... We can't get that lucky, can we? That looks like... Maybe for the snowblower? Yeah, that's like one of those ones that... Yes. Hmm. Nope. Yeah, we'll try the... Same size. That part of it is anyway. Let me uh, try that backwards. Hmm. I think we should probably bring this downstairs. And I think one of the spindles are screwed up anyway, so if they're the same size also, maybe we can rob that for it. Probably get something a little bit. See if they measure those. I think so. Let's see if we could just drive that down. I was gonna take the spindle out and like press it and all. Let's go see if that'll move.
Mm. I didn't take the bushing out of it yet, but. You figured I should be able to drive that right down, right? Get the key out of it. I, I would think it goes that direction. Because on the other end, there should be a, a wide hub. Clean that up with a wire wheel. Get any debris we can off of there, and see if we can drive it down. Wish I could just order some bearings to make life a lot easier. We decided to drive one of the old bearings out first. Make sure before I damage something else that what we are working with is repairable. I'm trying to catch the lip here and here on the vise to support it. And come down on the inside of the race. Just give it a good. See if it moved. Yeah, it's going. All right, good. Trying to keep from bending the, the pulley. This stuff is really fragile and soft, you know. Let's go from side to side. I'm not slipping in the vise. Now we can kind of eyeball the size up on that a little bit better. I have a location to go check before I start tearing that apart. So hidden back in there in that toolbox is a stash of bearings and bushings and all that kind of stuff. Let's go dig our way in there and see if we can find what we need. Yeah, I gotta bring this box over. You guys are precariously standing on a box, so don't jump around much. Those won't be it. This engine's gonna be an issue. More cam followers. Nope. This whole toolbox has to go over there. Now that stuff's going to be too small, right? Where's our. This is the one we're looking for. Hmm, I don't know. It's gonna be a pain in the ass if we gotta go through every box to try to find it. But that's already too tall. Yeah. I guess I'm gonna go eyeball boxes. And hopefully, maybe I find something that's uh, more akin to what we need. This is a stash from a long time ago. ID's a little too small. Might find it. We'll see. So it looks like the sub basement was where all the good stash was. And I have a good, I don't know, four of them, two sealed. One that's not, and there's another box or two. I think this one's got one in it, yeah. 
for the uh, mower decks. I'll, I'll make sure I got six. Bring them with me in case we have to go do some of the other ones that are on there. They should be the same size. Not uh, promising that, but they might actually have a grease fitting too and might use this style. But we'll find out. Well, fortunately, the bearings I went and looked at were off a little. They were not the correct size. So, I thought about stealing them out of that other mower deck, but I think I want to... I'm just checking the heights, see if we got a bend. Pretty good. I'm gonna check tomorrow, see if I can get them available. It's just too late in the day. I feel pretty good. Let's go pop that blade off and see what the uh, crud that's in there. So we can blow some of that out of there. If these bearings are okay. Yeah, sometimes I want to move forward so fast. You want to get whatever you can get done in one day. Of course, we don't have the right socket. Yeah, let's see if we can get that off of there. Lift your leg. There you go. Trippy. Look at sucks up a piece of rope or something at one point in his life. Uh, I don't know if that's gonna. That might be part of the spindle. I'm going to hit it with an air gun. We'll blow some of the crap out right from underneath it. Yeah. It's literally like grinding. Like a, grind, a pepper grinder. All the crap coming off of it. More rope. Common. It does have a, a grease fitting on it. A lot of times though, although they have grease fittings on them, they're not really meant to take grease. I know that sounds weird, but they're a sealed bearing like we just saw on the other one and the grease doesn't even get in there. I don't know, maybe leave it alone, we'll put it together. We'll let it spin up for a while. Sometimes they'll be okay. And sometimes they're good for about an hour and they get noisier and noisier. <laughs> I don't know. Let's go patch that hole that's up in the top of the deck. We can at least get that knocked out. Let's see if we can get down that folded edge in there. Clean up.
What's your eyes? And through the magic of video, I was able to clean up the old rusty one, got the numbers off of it. I, apparently it's a rare bird, but I was able to procure two of them at uh, like $12.50 a piece. So it's we're roughly 25 bucks into repairing this. We got to drive the old one out. And again, I, I want to watch out for the lip that is on these sides. I, I don't want to set it on the vise and, and have these get all distorted. So I'm trying to find a piece of metal that'll give it clearance to fit out. I think that's going to work for us. Let's see if we could drive that bearing out of there. There we go. Yeah, that one's, that one's just as nice as the first one, huh? So I'm going to go take a little bit of time 
get in here with a wire wheel. I'm going to clean up some of these surfaces. The way this gets put back together, pretend these are all new. They have a spacer that goes in between. And then when you bolt down on everything, it puts the pressure on the inner races so that you're not preloading them and they'll burn the bearing out. That's what this piece is for in the center there. But I'll show you that when we go to put it back together. Let me get it cleaned up. Let's go put that back together. I'm gonna to go through a little bit of grease on there. It'll help keep the surfaces from rusting in the future and help with assembly a little bit. And I do believe the regular mower deck, the spindles are set up the same way. I know they have grease fittings, but I think they're running the same bearing. So as you can see, those are sealed bearings. You can't see the inner. They have like shields on, they're pre-packed and pre-sealed talking about is um, this surface right here is covered a lot of times if you had a, a grease fitting that was able to grease bearings this outer shield wouldn't be here so when you pump grease through it would actually push it through uh, the bearing itself all right so we need to go tap that together we're gonna go which way should we go first let's go um, this one and when you're hammering them in you don't want to hammer whatever surface you're trying to hit on so say if you were trying to install this bearing on you know the 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 male version if you were trying to go on on the shaft of it and you were driving this down on something you would want to hit on the inner race if you're driving it like we're going to be hit here we're going to want to hit it on the outer part of the race. You don't want to shock across the bearings is the point I'm trying to get to. Actually, it looks like it's just going to drop right in compared to the rusty crap that was on it. Let's go and actually use an old bearing. Yeah, they're just, fall they're just falling right in. I expected much more of a, uh, a fight than that. And then we're going to go, we have one that should fit it. There we go. And the spacer, should have cleaned that up, huh? Goes in. And we need a new bearing. Now, like I said, when you bolt down on it, the, there's no, not going to be any pressure going across them. The other one just fell right out. <laughs> I may take a punch and uh, tighten up the surface. It looks like there's a little bit too much play in there. Yeah. Make sure there's no cracks in it. Yeah, I'm going to go crush down on this ring a little bit to tighten that up so that th one thing I don't want it to happen is have this race start spinning on the outside here. It doesn't have to be super tight, but it has to have a little bit of drag on it. Let me go take care of that. Might be able to do it with the vise itself. So we can get it right in there. Give it a little, a little crush. There we go. See if that did anything for us. Sure, I put the new one in. <laughs> it's new, new and dirty. Yeah, still gotta cuff it up a little. Ah, I tried. A couple of wax with a chisel should do it.
I physically saw the wall move in on that one, so. No, I went too much. <laughs> oh. I almost forgot. Spacer in the center, center of the center. It's pretty good. Good. I'm gonna go over to the wire wheel. I'm gonna go clean up the surface a little bit, get some of the rust off of it. Didn't even destroy the seals. Melted them a little bit. Cleaned off what was there from that. But they, the slide part is not the bushing to here. The slide part is the bushing to that shaft. But I'm going to throw some grease on there just to keep it from rusting in the future. Because if it rusts, what is going to happen is it's going to, as the rust grows, it's going to crush down on that and cause it to lock up again. So there we go. We got... Get that little. There we go. Let's go do the same for this. Be extra generous on this one. Go ahead, make your jokes. You know you want to. You know, you want me to. All right. Hopefully, you go down there. Actually, we should probably also be quite liberal with a bunch of that. Is that correct? I think it is.
Just seeing if I didn't mushroom that shaft over. I did not. I wonder if. Because sometimes when you get bushings, brass, plastic, doesn't really matter. If they're a little racked in how they're settled, if you hit with a hammer sideways, it'll help align them up. So that's more than free enough. Go push the push. Put the rest of it back together. That side up. center one there because it's an old one there. like I said when you tighten down on this if you didn't have that spacer in the middle this would be pushing on this this ring and preloading those bearings well now they're all stacked together so there's no pressure on the it's bolting right through the stack I don't have a wrench on me. Where do I? <clears throat> and it still spins free. So we need to go, we need to go belting. We need. Doing. What are you doing? I thought this one went all the way across the back. Yes, no. I need a minute myself. So you get that on there. The big mouse trap. There we go. So that the brackets hanging off of it. Tensions that one. And now we got this one here. That has to have the spring go back on for the lever. That. And I gotta that over there. So that's the free position you want to take it off. And then once you get it on the deck, you flip this all the way around. And that locks like that. And that gives the most tension pulling back from the mower deck to, to tension this one. That's it.
don't have a new battery for it, but let's go throw the old one back in it. And even if we have to jump start it, at least we have a battery for reserve. Go clean up that hardware, grease it up. I'll bolt all that down. Does he have enough to crank it? Maybe. Maybe not. It is not in neutral. <laughs> I think that battery is just so toasted that the uh, low fuel light just dims out. Let's go throw the jumper pack on it. Yeah, I wasn't giving it much hope. That should be enough though. Yeah. Let's give her a <laughs> There's a choke. I say if you're wrestling with the mower deck, but that's all installed and we got her set at two inches right now. So low that it can't run the PTO. We gotta put the jumper pack on it. Yeah, I was afraid of that. There's just not enough current. The battery's literally, there's nothing there. So you go to run the PTO, which is a big electric magnet. It just doesn't have enough power to fire. 
So I put the jumper pack on it, you heard it fire. More decks noisy, I know the other two spindles needed bearings, but again, only allowed to, uh, our allotment was two. <laughs> I'll uh, have to hunt for some extra ones over the course. Or I have other mower decks too, so I, I may be actually able to swap a whole deck over, we'll see. But again, we need some other bits and pieces for it. The shoe's got a, a hole in it. Again, the frame of it's fairly decent now. I'm happy with that. Still a little early, the grass hasn't started growing yet, so not going to be cutting any grass. Not for another month or two, I'll bring it home and at that time we'll be able to put a battery in it. Uh, it's got any bearings in the uh, two spindles of the decks. And a couple of the small things we'll look for. We'll look for a better seat, uh, better knob for the uh, brake. Engage and disengage. Disengage and disengage. What else do we say? Battery, I got a list over here. A little shopping list. Gas cap, shift button, belts, oil filter, seat. But right now we're into it for 40 bucks. That's not too bad for a running operating cutting machine. What do you think?
Hey guys. <laughs> I think we're gonna call it right there. I want to thank all you guys for hanging out with me. Just having some fun, bringing old rusty junk back together. And again, we've got some more to do on it, but for now, at least you know we got to a functioning machine. With that, I want to sign off. I want to thank all you guys for hanging out with me. And uh, do it again soon. How's that? All right, till then. Later. And here's that John Deere 318 I was talking about during the video. Again, it's got the tall back seat on it. This was the one that we got donated to us last summer and went through it, had engine issues and you know everything else that goes along with it. Uh, with that, another YouTuber spoke up and sold me for a real cheap price, a uh, snowblower in plow blade setup. He gave me one of them and I bought the other, something like that. Anyway, the snowblower, the, the plow works good. Unfortunately, it only snowed twice. I was going to do a video of switching over and setting up the snowblower and doing the repairs on that. But again, it, it snowed twice. <laughs> so it has not been used in, I want to say, four months it's been sitting here. Only thing that's been different between now and then is I put some snowblower front tires on it because the tires were not holding air. So I had a, a junk snowblower, put those on the rims. It leaks very little around one of the fittings. You can see a little bit of a wet spot. I know it's dark. A little bit of a wet spot on the floor there. Nothing terrible. But one of the O-rings over here is a little on the uh, finicky side. That and it is not charging. Uh, and after I found out later on, he was saying, yeah, it never really did. The light was always on. So it either needs a voltage regulator or it needs the alternator. Hopefully it's the voltage regulator because the alternator is in between the engine and drivetrain going to the back, you would have to pull the engine to change that out. So, but once you start the tractor, it really does not require any power. I don't believe, uh, unless you have the electric PTO on, essentially it's, it's just starting the engine. It has nothing to do with the uh, longevity, how long the tractor can run. Put chains on it. I don't know if it showed that on the last ones. It'll look good a little on the dusty side. You write your name in it. I try cold start. See if it'll fire up for us. Yeah, it's been about four months. I think it was a decent battery that I put in. Does it have a separate choke? I think it does down here. That's how long it's been. We'll give it half throttle. And let's give her. Oh, yeah, it probably needs to fuel the get sucked up from the tank, fill the float bowl, and then go. <laughs> or it could be out of gas. <laughs> Shouldn't be. Came out really nice. You're gonna be nice to put the snowblower on it. See the light on? That's what I was talking about. So that light stays on, it's just not charging. So maybe next fall we'll set it up, to, uh, get the snowblower up from upstairs and do the repairs that needs on it, and we'll get that set up on this machine. I use it with the plow this summer just for moving some dirt around you fitting out the uh, the back is gravel out back and it's along the ruddy side so if this has down pressure you can actually pick the front wheels off the ground with it and back drag so hi right, guys just a little show and tell on that one